so can you kind of paint the landscape of what professional surfing even looked like for you when you were really discovering it and had potential? Was there even a way to make a living professionally surfing? Was that a thing? I think that's a really good question because, look, at an early age, I loved surfing so much and I really wanted to be, like every kid, the best surfer in the world. I had the pictures up on the wall and I just dreamt of that being me. And I visualized that every night and I, that's all I wanted. That's all I lived and breathed surfing. I never knew what it would potentially become. I like at the age of 18, 19, I was a late bloomer really. Um, Billabong discovered me and they, one of the surfers that was meant to go on a trip, uh, couldn't make it. He blew out his knee. It was actually Munga Barry, which is, you know, all time favorite surfer back in the day too. And all of a sudden I got invited on a trip and everything just sort of fell into place there. And then, um, they wanted someone not to do contests cause there was a lot of guys, you know, doing the contest thing. And they came up with the idea of, well, they were stoked with uh, what they got out of that trip. It was, um, I went over to Nalu in Western Australia with Oki, Jack McCoy. And then after that, they wanted me on every trip. It was pretty cool. And I was just the young guy, the right place at the right time. And they obviously liked the way I surfed and everything just sort of took off from then. That was the way my career started. What, um, what year was that trip? Do you remember? In 90, would have been around 91, 92, I'd say. Uh, were there any other professional free surfers at the time? Not really. There, there was. There was always, there's always been underground free surfers. Um, Gary Green was a little bit before my time. He was a root call guy doing that. But I was probably the first recognized guy out there to get paid to just go surfing and film. Um, so all of a sudden I created new parts for other people, um, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was, I was, I was pretty much the pioneer at the time, I guess. Yeah. I don't want to be a pretty humble guy. <laughs> I don't want to say it was, but I was, I was, I was started something which other companies saw so much value and so much potential for having someone just to travel the world go surfing, wear the latest gear, whatnot, while everyone else is on tour. I could be so much more productive shooting me um, elsewhere than crappy ways that were on tour. I mean, it seems obvious, right? Yes, like, it makes a lot of sense. It was, well, well, the what you were doing then is so much more relatable to every other surfer on the planet True. rather than putting on a contest jersey and trying exactly, to do yeah. a bunch of turns towards the beach. That's exactly right. Relate, you know, very reliable i can't even say the word yeah. relatable yeah because um that's what everyone wants to do everyone wants to travel and surf and find new waves and discover and and not yeah just go surfing i think that's what surfing is about it's not about putting on a contest jersey it's it's about having fun and discovering waves i'm surprised to hear that that was billabong's marketing department that identified yes. that in you and posed the idea because i was just thinking that you had identified that you didn't want to surf contests anymore and maybe had to pitch oh. the idea and convince them. So I'm surprised to hear that it was partially their idea. Well, back at that age, I was actually, I did compete. I wasn't a very good competitor. I didn't have that in my blood. I think you're born with that competitiveness. Definitely wasn't in me. Um, but yeah, it was Billabong that pitched the idea. So I give credit to them. I think it was, it was great. Billabong was not, it was before they were a corporate company at the time. It was back in the early days and it was a, some uh, core crew involved with the company, which is pretty cool. I don't want to glance over that entire phase of your professional surf mm -hmm. career. However, in hindsight, when you look back at it, um, with the benefit of hindsight, I guess, was there anything that you would have wished that you would have managed differently in your pro surf career? Uh, that's an interesting question. Look, not look. I was a country kid. Um, very uh, my hor 
I wish I had the mindset or the mind that I had now back in when I was in my 20s. I'm sure everyone would say the same thing with life in general. When you're 60, you're going to say yes, that about being 50. Probably. <laughs> I definitely. I dare say that's true. But uh, look, I don't have any regrets at all. I did try the contest thing. I didn't make it. So that's fine. Like I know I tried, didn't make it. At least I had a go. And it's no what if, if I did do that, because a lot of people wanted me to do the contest thing. They thought I could beat, I could match Kelly Slater and all that. I had all those crazy calls were going down in the day. <laughs> I didn't make it. I wasn't competitive. But I'm happy with the, the, the life path that's been given to me. And there's been some crazy ups and downs with stuff outside of surfing as well. But here I am today. Um, I couldn't be more proud of myself, of the man who I've become. And yeah, just the way life has panned out. Um, I'm, life is mind blowing. Um, the, you know, everyone's got a book, everyone's got a crazy book about their life, but, um, yeah, he's just got to deal with those ups and downs. Life's definitely about the ocean. You know, there's a lot of lulls in life. There's a lot of big stormy sets that come through and there's a lot of perfect days um, yeah, I've never been happier with the way, you know, it's made me who I am to be who I am right now. Good. Well, the reason I ask about hindsight and things mm. you would have managed different is that people don't always understand in the moment what the ups and the downs might be. Yes. And they'll look back and say, holy cow, that was the up. And I really should have loved yes. that, you know, yeah. whatever. My kid waking me up in the middle of the night seemed like an annoyance. Turns out I loved those moments of being up at night with like whatever it happens to be, you know? Yeah. Um, but from my perspective, I never got to see enough of you. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, but then I think back and I go, that mystique was part of the allure. Yes, yes. And so was... if you were the guy who was waking up and calling the photographer, let's meet at the beach or whatever, maybe you would have oversaturated your image. True. And I wouldn't, as a viewer, would not have... A, appreciated it as much as I did you know yeah well it felt like that at the time I felt like I was doing my best surfing right at the end of my career um I did a documentary called Wonder Jar um with my good friend Justin Gain and I think I was 32 33 but it was right then the next free surfers were coming up the David Rastovich is on all that then all of a sudden Billabong was choosing to push those guys and I was like all of a sudden I was like, what about me? <laughs> That's what it felt like. But it was so exciting to watch David or Rasta's um, career take off too. I was so stoked for him, so happy for him. Um, and, and a whole bunch of new free surfers at the time. But all of a sudden I felt like the old guy and I didn't want to be that old guy. I mm. dreaded that, you know, I felt like I was washed up at the time because surfing, you know, being 27, 28, that was, that was a career. you done and dusted <laughs> so i felt like i was almost pushing and extending that um at my age and i didn't want to be that guy look at margo <laughs> but so that was felt like that got pushed on to me a little bit but maybe that was all in my head too um and i did i, I actually really struggled after my surfing career i um felt like i just felt a little bit abandoned. Um, and then I went straight into working in a, into well, at Billabong at the time. And I was, I went straight behind the desk, no windows under aluminum lights and just sitting in front of a computer. And uh, I struggled with that and I knew it wasn't me. Um, what was the job? Uh, I was event coordinating actually, which is random. I was, I was running, uh, helping with the world junior events. Um, I was helping with the, um, Tahiti pro. Um, but then I'd get involved with, you know, hands on, like helping set up the events, um, the logistics of events. Um, but I wasn't surfing as much. And when I wasn't surfing, it sort of, I struggled with the, um, my inner happy, inner happiness, and, but I didn't realize that's what it was at the time. I did yeah. get depressed. I actually struggled with that. And then my marriage failed. Um, everything went a bit pear-shaped for a few years. Sorry Don't worry about, about it. And, um, yeah, life was, uh, you know, I felt insecure, very – I really cared what people thought about me and I just went into a bit of a, a hib hibernated a little bit um, and I – hated surfing at the time i hated where it became a lot more corporate and a lot more 
I, I don't know, I just had enough. I surfed, I put my heart and soul into surfing. Like even though I was a free surfer, I w- worked bloody hard to to get clips. I'd stay in the water, to, you know, from dawn to dusk to try and get that one clip. Like, you know, it's, I, I worked hard at it. Um, I didn't, I never took it for granted. And, um, but then at the end of my career, I sort of, it just became living out of a suitcase, traveling, then having wife not being able to come with me, then having a young family come. It, it did get a bit difficult. And then when I was home, I found it difficult as well. So it was definitely a time where it was, it was, it was, it was a tough couple of years. But I did um, get back on my feet again. Um, when you, yeah. when you said you felt abandoned? Yes. By whom? I felt abandoned by the surf industry, by the surf magazines, by the photographer, from everybody. Of All of a sudden, everyone was like, Margo this, Margo that. Can we do this? Can we do that? Then all of a sudden, it was just nothing. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I wasn't on call all the time. My phone wasn't ringing every day. And all of a sudden, and then I'd pick up a surf magazine. And I wasn't in the surf magazines. or It's hard to explain it. I, I don't yeah. think it's a selfish thing to say, but that was my life. I was so, I was sort of big in the nineties. Um, I was in every surf magazine, and the photographers were calling me every day. Or, you know, I was getting asked for interviews, and it was, yeah, you know, I was in the limelight in the in the nineties, and and it felt like overnight it just vanished. And I don't care who you are, you sort of miss a little bit of that because that's all I had. That's all I knew. And I felt like maybe, you know, like football players go through the same sort of things after their career's finished. And I felt like I was, yeah, I struggled with that. I think the biggest thing I learned from the whole experience of everything is patience. It's like, it's not going to happen overnight. Getting back on your feet, you know, you want it to, you know, next morning wake up and everything's going to be fine. But you just got to know there's still going to be some bad days. Then you're going to have your good days, but you're going to probably meet, you know, another love of your life again in life or, yeah, there's, yeah, patience is, I don't know, the biggest thing I learned out of the whole experience of life. I mean, look, whoever thought today, I hear I'm 51 years of age and I'm still, you know, I've got a career in surfing still. Um, but I think the coolest thing is there is an age group between 35 to 65, everyone's, growing up watching me surf or or whatnot or just everyone's still everyone there's so many the company seem to think you've got to cater for like 18 to 23 year old you know young groms and that's where the fashion is but surfing's a lot bigger than that um and i think i don't know i think people can relate to me i mean they can relate to not doing air 360s they can relate to keeping the board in the water and keeping it on rail and i think that's why there's a niche maybe in the market for someone like myself at the moment. Um, they see it's a healthy, happy lifestyle and see that I'm still keen and it, it's, you know, surfing never dies. Right. 